to start. There's a comment about AI just now. So I my comment to the brothers uh, that uh, AI is uh, something that uh, very important for the Muslim Ummah so that uh, we can so that we can uh, uh, well versed and champion the AI we cannot just ignore oh may Prof. Saharabi is ready Yeah. Okay. Uh, thank you so much for Fauzan uh, about the AI. It's a very uh, important issues uh, that we will explore. Maybe a special course um, in the future program, inshallah. Alhamdulillah, I will come back. Uh, all our friends, uh, brothers and sisters, to our uh, program. Alhamdulillah, our opening uh, session run very smooth. We are uh, half an hour uh, early. Um, suppose the next program will be our rector, Professor Dr. Osman Baka, but he is not ready uh, for the timing. Uh, Alhamdulillah, luckily we have with us um, our very respected uh, Professor Dr. Said Arabi ID uh, with us. He has been here since early morning, Prof. <laughs> Thank you so much. Since <laughs> the Alhamdulillah. <laughs> For us in our young community, um, Prophet Arabi is our our father, our scholar. He has been with us for a long time. He is the man behind our communication department at uh, the Pulia. He is a very influential in setting up our radio, our TV station. And Prof also conducted big research on uh, communication and all kind of areas and has produced or has supervised so many students uh, master stage here alhamdulillah thank you so much for uh, to be with us today uh, for convenience of time we invite prof to present first and after this uh, our uh, uh, rector prof also is our rector our former rector also we can go and search uh, prof site the uh, background on online there's so many publication presentation and so on so forth alhamdulillah so uh without further ado uh, we invite our beloved professor uh Dato Said arabi to present uh, his presentation on islam and communication we have 30 minutes um pro for this time we do not take a uh, question uh, because it's just an opening uh, session but if uh, there are any question we will um in, in the chat box, we will send it to you. Uh, maybe uh, other opportunities, you can uh, reply them in by, by passing or specifically, inshallah. We will copy all uh, command or question from chat box and we'll send it to you, inshallah. So, with um, more respect, we invite our beloved Professor Sen Arabi for his presentation. Prof, still again. Thank you very much, uh, Brother Moderator. Thank you very much. Uh, um, other Professor Jamil Osman and and all my brothers eh, for kindly inviting me to participate in this uh, this program. So to all of you, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, I'll begin uh, my talk on uh, on introduction to communication fact. Uh, looking at uh, this subject has a way to introduce to you my department. Hopefully, we are able to, to entice or invite uh, participants who are willing to do their postgraduate program in our department. So, my talk is actually to, to introduce to you uh what are the things that we we offer um in this department eh? so here i was saying that i'm talking about communication but communication is not the ordinary sense or the word communication ordinary conversation ordinary writing eh? is is a subject of study it's a subject of study in other words 
it has its own uh, feel. It is it, it has its own methodologies methodology. But in communication, we have several methodologies huh, that we are going. And here, I would like also to to differentiate between uh, two spheres of communication. There is the interpersonal communication, yeah, interpersonal communication and the mass media or mass communication. That is the difference I want to make. Yeah. Okay, so we, we, we like to go to certain models and we'll be using certain models. You, you see here, we've taken certain models, but in our department, we not only look at these models, but we look from the Islamic point of view, yeah, Islamic view, and say, is, is there something missing not in this, in these various models? When you talk about the source, are they talking just source ordinarily, or could we add an Islamic dimension to what constitute cause, or what constitute source or sources? And when we look at the receiver, can we look from the Islamic perspective and say? What type of uh, receivers are we talking about? So, uh, the department at the interpersonal level, uh, look at this from the Islamic point of view. And when you follow our uh, our course or lectures given in the next few sessions, you, you'll be able to understand uh, what I mean by looking at this model and understanding it from the Islamic uh, perspective. I'm also looking uh, uh, at Rabbi. Yeah. Uh, sorry for interrupt. Can can you uh, uh, go for slide mode presentation because too small uh, on the right on the yeah because some uh, uh, participant cannot see clearly uh, no, uh, no. the the presentation mode on the I think in the uh, next week presentation mode. Well, yes. I uh, know. Yes, uh, presentation mode. I think you're controlling it. Your yeah, I, I don't. Uh, I don't okay. have. Uh, yeah. Can you presentation mode? Uh, Hello, we are controlling it. Okay, Doctor Jamal can. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think it's already presentation mode. It's full. Oh, okay. Full, huh? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Shukran. Okay. Proceed, uh, from Arabi. Okay. Sorry. Okay. But can you can you hear me? Can I? Okay. Yes. Loud and clear. Loud and clear. Ah, good, 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 good. Okay. So I want to go to the next. Next, next. Uh, okay. So my 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 focus uh, today is to look at more of mass communication, mass media. Yeah and see the implication it has for Muslims yeah, and how we will be able to use the mass media or react to the, to the mass media in a way that is beneficial to all of us. Eh? So we, the assumption of the mass media is this. we we'll go to the next slide. Next slide. The the assumption of the mass media is it is sending messages from the source, messages to an audience which is more than one, one to one. Because when you talk about interpersonal, you're looking at source as a person and the receiver has another person. But when you look at the mass media communication or mass communication, you're looking at the source. It can be an organization, yeah. But when you look at the audience, it's more than one. It could be one thousand. It could be one million, for, for example, yeah. So in in this case, in in our case here, yeah. uh, in in terms of the terminology, uh, are we considering it as mass communication? Because I'm talking to one. But you have one thousand people listening to my lecture, yeah. So, and 
And the difference between interpersonal and mass communication is that in the olden days, in mass communication, I do not get an immediate feedback. But in in the new terminology, I I always get an instant feedback. For example, I get uh, feedback from from Brother Fauzan. He says that please um, make your slide a uh, uh, bigger. So this is an, an immediate response. Eh? So the mass communication right now today is enable enable you to give an immediate response which is not seen in the olden idea of mass communication. So we are entering into a different world where I think as Muslims, we have to understand how we can participate and understand the, the dynamics of the technology that we have now. Okay, next please. They are talking about the traditional media, I'm talking about the new media, source to receivers, but now the new media, source, receivers, and you not only listen to me on Zoom, you can send it off. Yeah? Facebook, Instagram, and etc. So you are, you are acting as, although you are receivers, but you are also acting as my agent. Agent has source in spreading the message or messages to your friends and others. Eh? So this is the different uh, model that that we have to understand uh, at, at the present moment. Okay, next. Now the the old idea, the old idea is the model we have is supposed to be a source, message, channel, audience. And the question they always ask is, what is the effect? What is the effect? In other words, we always assume, we always assume that the source is always powerful. The source is always powerful. The message and channel is so effective, so effective. And the audience is so passive, so passive. Yeah. So that the source with all so-called credibility and the message is so well written and the channel is so effective that the audience is so naive, so passive that they or uh, the audience members are so naive, so passive that they listen to the source, they accept the messages from the channels and they are influenced by that. Now, I think we as Muslims must be able to understand and say, look, we are not passive audience, we are active. We read Ikraq. Yeah? We, we are uh, uh, people who read and understand. And we as audience members are not only interacting with the source, we acting with the others in our community that makes us not passive audience members to any messages to any sources that come that that we receive from eh? so this is important for us to build resilience within ourselves to make ourselves relevant to our community and not just to accept any message or to accept uh, any source that comes from any media. Okay, next please. Now this is where I started to use the word, Brother uh, Fauzan would talk about AI, eh? I would put as as robots. Eh? Are, are we robots that are just programmed? In other words, can, can the mass media, can the Western media send us the report and we accept it as, as robots have been, has been programmed or are we affected by AI that we that we have not thought much about AI. We think that AI is giving us a neutral messages. Yeah? 
So I, I agree with Brother Fauzan as now. AI is very, very important for us to understand. We have not to use AI. We have also to make use of AI for our own benefit. I'm using... Well, deep, deep learning versus deep fake. Deep yeah. Learning. Now yeah. is deep fake. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, Sorry yeah. for interrupting. Yeah, go, go. Yeah, students. Very good. Or, or fake. Eh? You, we think that AI... Deep fake. Deep fake. Deep fake. Yeah. fake you know? so we think yeah. that it's true. So we accept it. But actually, people are programming the AI to send the messages to us. So we have to be active in in putting our data so that it becomes part of the AI that we are the sources of AI. Now, I'm looking at this model where I would assume that because we are passive audience, we receive messages only. Yeah? We become like robots. When they say go, we go. When they say stand up, we stand up. So we cannot allow that to happen to us. Yeah? And we see the report on the Gaza. Why? Because we don't have enough channels to verify. And lucky for us, we have maybe our friends or friends who have relatives in Gaza. They send us through the social media. We have a different picture altogether about what is happening in, in Gaza. But if you depend on CNN or depend on, uh, on Western media, we have a distorted picture of it. But so long as you know, or you, you are skeptical about it, then I think the first battle is being won. You are skeptical of these Western sources <coughs> that they are not giving you all the information. Yeah, that the, the, the news is slanted. Yeah, so that I think is required on all of us. So the question is, what sources other than the main media that we have that is of curious? Curious to us. Okay, next please. <coughs> this is the thing I call it the, the robotic problem and reasoning in communication research. Are we program has programmed person to accept messages? If they tell us that uh, everything is okay in Gaza and we as robots say, yeah, we agree what is being told by BBC or we read the economies and say, yeah, that's what you say. But I think, no, we have to be reason reasonable about and to reason, give reason why we should accept and why we should not accept certain news items that come from the mass communication. Okay, next, please. Now, communication has emerged as a subject, as I told you. You know, we have people accepting communication in layman's terms. I speak to you, I write to you. But communication now has become a field of study. A field of study with its limitations, with its own theories, with its own method, method and methodologies, for example, that we should acquire. Yeah. And uh, we, and the subject is also broadened to include not only um, gender subjects in communication. We have also put radio, uh, television, uh, news agencies, so adver advertisements in public relations. So these are things that are important to us because it shapes the image that we build about our society. So when you talk about Islamophobia, you want to understand how is that this Islamophobia has spread so fast and yet we are not able to counter this Islamophobia because the West has within its command the mass media. Yeah. So they have created an image that Muslims are to be feared about. Eh? To be feared about. But now when we have the Gaza, uh, I think we have another phobia coming up, the Jewish Israeli phobia, which nobody has talked about. Yeah. Uh Islamic phobia there I mean 
some Muslim extremists have killed one or two, but you have Israeli phobia killed 50,000 people bombing all through the night. So, but nobody has, has countered that, huh? the Israeli phobia, uh, which I think they're creating fear among the Muslims and uh, uh, non-Muslims alike. Now, the methodology that we use is not only simple methodology, but we also we use statistics. We also now in the use of computers. We also uh, uh, looking forward to other uh, more sophisticated uh, models that we can build for that for us to understand our own society. Okay, next please. Now, uh, as a subject, as a subject, uh, communication in, in Malaysia was introduced in USM in 1971, and then in UITM in 1972, uh, UKM 1976, I was, I was then the first hit in the UKM, and later on you have your UPM, and, I, and then it came to IIUM, which I am now a member of. I, I, yeah, I think I should also thank, thank yeah, Yusuf Hussein, eh? uh, who I think one of the early founders of a uh, communication program in the IIUM. Okay, next please. No, but, but to make you aware, communication has a subject, yeah, was I think created by or established by the American universities, American and it started after the first and the second world war, first and second world war. So the underlying concern was on the psychology of the audience. How would audience understand the messages given by the mass media? given by radio, later on given by TV. And now we are looking at how the mass media can influence using not only TV but also with the new media, including AI. How would we understand the influence of AI on the audience, on the people? So this is part of the study of mass communication that we have uh, to understand about. Okay, next please. Now, as I was telling to you, the study of the study on communication, mass communication, is sometimes a study on the ideology, because. The Western use of communication, Western use of communication is to look at the mass media as an element or an instrument of ideology to spread the idea of democracy. Spread the idea of democracy is, 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 is an ideology. So, so, so ideas or concepts like the free press, is an I is an ideology spread within the liberal democracy that you talk about, yeah. And the idea of a control press is sometimes talked about as against democracy, yeah. As democracy, so we I think have to think about whether we should be totally free or totally controlled. We cannot be. But we like to have an Islamic dimension about it so that we will be able to accept messages that are credible, yeah, full of amana, so that the we as receivers of the message not only can receive the message, but we can also use it to spread the message, the good of the messages to our friends and family. This is, I think, the ideal, the ideal form of the mass media 
that we should be thinking about using the new technology which is available to us right now. Yeah. So we have a system of government, democracy, communism, authoritarian, hybrid. So this has something to do with the ideology of the mass communication. Okay, next. Now the fear of the Western has it came from the first and the second world war. Yeah, first world war. They they look at the mass media in 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 Europe uh, being controlled by the authoritarian regime. So they 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 build up that when a media is being controlled by another authoritarian media, then that regime is always in contradiction to the liberal democracy. To the West is either you are with us or you are against us. But I think uh, members of OIC, I think you will have to able to say out that we are not with you or we are not against you. We need to have our own idea of freedom. We need to have our own idea of the system of media that we have, media system that we have, so that we can have a, a different alternative media to the West and also to the authoritarian form of media that is being controlled entirely by the government or the party in power. Okay, next please. Now we I, I have talked to you about about the Muslim media. Next please. Now we have we have we have written several books. We have seen here, um, uh, not from us, but we uh, to make you aware that there are books they have written. They have taken issues about uh, mass media, mass communication, and whatnot. So this film, mass communication from the Islamic perspective, uh, looking at mass media affecting the Muslims, is always a very interesting subject of study because it has tremendous impact on the Muslim societies as a whole. Okay, next please. So you see Western coverage of the Israeli war on Gaza. Is it bias or is it unprofessionalism? Yeah. So at least 10 kill as I begins major military operation. Uh, is always from the Israeli point of view. It's not from from the West Bank. Uh, like how many hundred people kill today when Israel bomb? Eh? So it's always looking from the Israeli point of view. It's not looking at people who are the victims of the aggressors. So we have to be careful of that. We need to have our own uh, source, which becomes we will be able to provide an international agenda for discussion. We are now only depending on Al Jazeera, yeah, and which is I think is which is not enough to raise the concern as an international agenda. Okay, next please. So, so communication is taught in various schools. We also taught in, uh, I don't think it's only taught in Malaysia, but it also taught in Sudan, it's also taught in Nigeria. Uh, I think all the uh, listeners we have, you have uh, coming from your own uh, country, uh, departments of communication, we are all looking at to have a common agenda in terms of research so that we can have some concern about factors that are affecting the Muslim community. And uh, we have produced uh, many masters and PhD at, from IIUM and they are now heading uh, various uh, schools in, in, in Sudan, in in uh, Nigeria, in, in in Uganda, I think. Uh, so we hopefully we would like to have them to do research 
on matters affecting the mass media in our own country because from the mass media we are able to spread the news about issues that affect the Muslim society. Okay, next. No, no, but we have also to be aware that communication alone is not only negative, we can also make use of the mass media for positive use. Eh? So we have used mass media for purposes of bringing about development. So we have used ideas on development to bring about changes eh, among the farmers in, in Asia, in Africa and in Latin America. Yeah, But we are very cautious of the ideas that are being brought by Western scholars so that they are, these ideas are then adapted or we introduce own ideas that are beneficial to our own farmers in our own society. Okay, next please. So the issue is that that we have to be very cautious that all ideas from the mass media are not really negative, are not only negative that we are just robotics, but some of the ideas like as I brought you as an example in development communication, these ideas are beneficial that we need to have these ideas to bring about changes in our own society. And these changes are needed uh, for our farmers, our peasants, or even our lay people to, to understand the benefit of, of, of communication. Yeah, next please. I'm, I'm writing what time. So we have used uh, mass communication when when we when we mount uh, COVID uh, nineteen to prevention about health. Uh, what information do we have on COVID nineteen? Bigger issue is, I think Dr. Omar Kasali will be able to answer. What what do as Muslims uh, have have we been able to come up with our own vaccines or not? COVID nineteen. Oh, we have been able to mount uh, campaigns, but I think of of more concern to me. I think as Muslim scientists, as Muslim scientists, are we able to come out with our own vaccines to be made use among Muslims and also to be able to be made use of among non-Muslims? So, as scientists, I think we have to be uh, more than just uh, mounting uh, information programs and and campaigns. Okay, next please. So uh, rolling back, rolling back. I think what I mean by rolling back is we have to take back and look at ourselves. I uh, know we cannot accept any messages as as they come from. We have to look back, be skeptical about it. Roll back and say, <laughs> can we accept those messages that bring benefit to me, to us? to my community, to the Muslim community, to the to the Ummah, and I will accept that, you know. Or I cannot just accept any messages that come along. And we need to have our own mechanism to bring uh, relevant messages to our own self, to our own society, to our own Ummah. Yeah. Next. So what do these tell us about communication has a field of study that so long as we can we reject the idea or ideas that are robotic in nature, we will also be able to tell ourselves that we have to be as Muslims, we have to be active audience in receiving messages as they come along. Okay, next please. So we have to be to react uh, again, absorbing pure Western media theory. We have like Usman Jasinaka from Sri Lanka. Who says we have Asian approaches as Muslim. Uh, Yusuf Hussein will talk about how do we react as Muslims to 
uh, messages they come from Western society. Okay, next. Well, we have tried, in, uh, we have, I think, to acknowledge that Muslim societies have come up with their own uh, media. Uh, I think Bernama has come up with with Bernama, Indonesia has come up with with Antara. We have tried Ona one time, but it doesn't look to be uh, succeeding. Uh, it, it, one time we have Iana, but I think we we it's not fulfilling our aspirations. But I, but I, I'm just to, to highlight to you that there are attempts to have agencies to give our own perspective. But I think so far Al Jazeera has been uh, one that has been very clearly in in the forefront. Eh? Okay, next. How do we understand? How do we overcome the Western universal me media? I, my point, my my time is coming up. So I think we have to use a uh, reason. We have what I would sometimes call riot or rolling back, roll back and say, can I accept this? Can I bring back, can I bring my own message? Can I bring back and, and roll back and bring reasons to the understanding of communication? Okay, thanks. Should scholars start afresh? Uh, yes and no. We, but we, I would like to say we should always question the concepts, question the measurements that we always accept. Maybe perhaps we bring a new concept or we conceptualize or reconceptualize the concepts that we're using that make us more relevant and beneficial to, to all of us. Okay, next. So there is globalization which aim to homogenize we should be con conscious about that. We should not allow homogenization to, to take care of us. We should be, I want to use the word womanization, yeah, to make it one common woman. Yeah? But definitely we should accept ideas, be skeptical about it, so long as it is, it bring benefit to the ummah, we should accept it. Okay, next. So in in, in uh, we do have uh, Muslim media besides Islamic media we have Muslim media, uh, but Muslim media functions I think more uh, within the country. I think I I would, I would put reconceptualize Muslim media to be like Greater Haryan, even our TV3 media they are owned by Muslims, eh? Muslim, which. Uh, bring the viewpoint of Muslim, Muslim interests, uh, Muslim problems, and, and etc. Okay, next. So we need to define, redefine, and refine, I think, add more to the existing theories and concepts. So this is what my, my department is doing uh, in IIUM. Okay, next. Besides that, we're also doing comparative research, not only with with others, but we uh, with with others in in Asia. We're also doing uh, research with uh, with with other countries. In I think Sudan, we're doing Saif with Saif, with Mustafa in 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 Nigeria, in Ismail, in 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 Qatar. Eh? In Qatar, I'm also doing comparative research. On the Muslim interest in with my friend uh, Takashi Inoguchi in in in, in Japan. Eh? So we, we do we need to do not only research on the Muslim. We also have to do comparative research so that they would also be able to understand the problem that we as Muslim face, and uh, that we mean that we also want progress for Ummah in a way that they can sometimes help, help us. Okay, next. So com comparative research, I think I would, I would, I would underscore this, this issue. It, you bring in more people to do research with us in, in communication. And also I think in, 
even in, in psychology or anthropology, in sociology, in political science, so that other people will be able to understand us. Yeah, and when they do research with us, they will be able to to understand the problems that we face as Muslim, and and at the same time, we able to incorporate this as partners in our journey to a, a better life. Okay, next. I mentioned here about competitive research. Okay, next. So issues in the Muslim media, problem with leadership, ownership, uh, competition. We need more people to own more media. We have to understand the competition. Competition now is not just writing. Competition now with a new technology. I think with the new technology, we... Uh, we uh, even the traditional media are losing readership. Uh, they are not only losing the readership, they are also losing profit and they are making a loss. So we, we have to understand uh, our own uh, media owned by our brothers and they are suffering a lot. So we need to understand how we could help them to go to this new format, this new uh, technology that we are now uh, fighting. Eh? So I think Brother Pozan will be able to, I think uh, people in K KICT uh, were able to, to, to help us to bring forward how do we bring uh, messages not through the traditional media but through the new uh, technology that we talk we talk about. Okay, next please. Okay, next. So uh, it is something to through the media we bring about. Say, I I just came up with with my my finding. Uh, what do Malaysians have for breakfast? And we found out. Majority go for nasi lama, so I think helpful nasi lama and teh tarik. This is one from, and we, and just to tell me that I'm coming to the end of my my presentation. Okay, next. Okay, that's it. So thank you so much, Professor Fazan, uh, Datuk Wira, Jamil. Thank you very much.